You were not meant to be a slave to the grind. You were not meant to trade your life force for money. You can escape gravity. You can unlock your life. You got this. Let's go. We are not meant to be a slave. We're not going to trade our lives and time for money. And that's what we're going to talk about. Time is money. We've heard that over and over. Time is money. But is time really money? I'm here to challenge that assumption and say time is not money, right? Time is the most valuable resource we have. Why? Why? Well, it's the one thing that we can't replace. I don't care how rich you are. You're a billionaire or multi-billionaire Bezos. He's got 24 hours in a day, just like me, just like you. And once that time is spent, it's spent, it's gone. And we are spent. Spending this resource, this precious resource that we can't get any more of, that we'll never have any more of, doing things that we don't want to do. Is that you? Do you feel trapped? Are you working a job you don't like? Are you running a business? Maybe it's even your own business and it's making you crazy. Guys, I was at a party the other night and I was talking to a longtime friend of mine and This friend had started an online business and she said, Jennings, I'm making more money in this business now or almost as much money now as I am in my regular job. I was like, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome because I knew she didn't really like this job. She's worked at this job, I think, since we graduated college, like over a decade. And it's kind of a mundane job, but and she always complains about it when I talk with her, but she's still there. And so she tells me this and I'm thinking, oh, cool. You know, that's great news. I said, the Internet's a crazy place. Why don't you focus on that and focus on growing that and quit what you're doing? And you'll probably be a lot happier. You'll have your time freedom back. You'll probably make a lot more money. It'd be great. And you know what she said is, well, I can't because I would feel bad. Like they need me there. They need me to be at this place. They couldn't go on without me. I'm irreplaceable. And it's so funny because we think that we're so irreplaceable, right? We think that we're so important and what we do is so important and we're so vital to our coworkers or to our companies and no one else can do it like we can do it. But you know what? There are very, very few people to whom you are irreplaceable. What I mean by that is, if you left your job, you don't think they could replace you? Maybe it would be hard. Maybe they would even lose money. But there's nobody else in the world that's as smart as you or that could be trained to do what you do or learn what you do. I doubt it. You know, they're churning out brain surgeons every day. There's plenty of smart people in this world and nobody is irreplaceable. And who you are irreplaceable to is... Number one, yourself and being true to yourself. Number two, your kids, your family, maybe your spouse if you're married. Those are the people that we are irreplaceable to. And yet those are the people that most often get the leftover, the remainder. We're willing to trade massive quantities of our life for people and organizations that really at the end of the day, don't care that much. We are replaceable. But are you irreplaceable to your son? Are you irreplaceable to your daughter, to your wife, to your husband? Probably. And that's the relationships that we've got to keep in balance. And I want to touch back on the point that I first made of being irreplaceable to yourself and being true to yourself. The number one deathbed regret that people have that they say as they're dying is I wish I had lived a life true to myself, not the life that others had expected me to live. I wish I lived a life true to myself, my goals, my dreams, what I wanted to do versus living a life that others expected of me. And that hit home when I was talking to my friend because she is living a life based on what others are expecting of her. We need you here. 
but you've got to stay here. We can't go on without you. We'd fall apart without you. One, that isn't true. Two, she doesn't enjoy it. That's not living to her full potential. And so the longer she stays there, the more life force that she spends there, the more time is wasted. And she's not being true to herself. So what are we truly chasing, guys? Are we truly chasing money? I did a conference a few weeks ago. We did a a yacht event where I invited 12 people to come down to Charleston with me, jump on the yacht. It was like a weekend thing. We had steak dinner. We had a conference. We had some talks. We went out on the boat. Captain, crew, catered, had some cigars, had a good time, and talked high-level business stuff. And relationships were formed there. And that at that conference, we had an exercise. And during this exercise, we had people listing out the things that they were dreaming of going four or five, 10 years into the future, even 20 years into the future and envisioning that, painting that picture. And what I envisioned was kind of like a Thanksgiving table with my kids and maybe their spouses surrounding me. My wife is there, maybe my grandchildren at the time. And we have built a lot of memories together. We have a beautiful home. We have a beautiful relationship with each other. And every other person in that group to the person, said something similar to that. Relationships with their kids, relationships with their wives, happiness, joy, fulfillment in their career, fulfillment in what they were doing. Not one of them talked about the war chest full of gold that they have in the back or the wallet full of $100 bills and millions in the bank. Yes, that's important, but that's not what we are chasing, right? So what are we truly chasing? We're not chasing money. We're chasing freedom. Go where we want to go, when we want to go there, with who we want to go there, whenever, wherever. So I was reading a book. It's called The Slight Edge. If you haven't read it, I would highly recommend you check it out. But in The Slight Edge, they describe success. And the author says, I know I'm successful when I can wake up every day and ask, what would I like to do today? When my passive revenue exceeds my lifestyle needs, when I can live anywhere in the world that I want, I can live anywhere in the world that I choose. When I'm working on projects that are exciting me and they're allowing me to do my best work, when I can disappear for several months and have no effect on my income, where there are no whiny people in my life, where I'm wearing my watch for curiosity only. I don't have any time obligations. I don't have any deadlines and I can wear whatever clothes that I want all the time, anytime. So that's kind of like in a nutshell, what I think most people are chasing. So how do we get there where we understand time is not money. Time is the most and ultimate valuable resource. It's our life force and we must stop trading it for money, or at least be able to trade it for money on a highly leveraged scale that eventually we won't have to trade it for. I find that in this exercise, I did this exercise and it was more helpful to define what I didn't want versus trying to start with what do I want? We're trying to get to where do I want to go and clarify that picture And I found that it was easier to start with defining what I didn't want. There was a lot of things in my prior company that I didn't like. I ran a construction company and I built custom homes and did renovations, kitchens and bathrooms. And I had at one point up to 10 employees, a lot of clients, a lot of jobs. And even though I own my own business, you could say, oh, you're the master of your own destiny. Not really, because the way that I had built that business I just had a lot of meetings with my project managers. I had to get up early in the morning and meet with them. And I didn't like doing that. I didn't want to do that. I was beholden to clients where they owed me money. And if I didn't do everything exactly the way they wanted it on the schedule that they felt was predetermined and reasonable, then I wasn't going to get paid. If you've been in construction, you know how that goes. You get to the end of the job and all of a sudden the client has a bunch of issues and reasons why they're not going to pay you. And I didn't like that. 
I didn't like that the business wasn't scalable, that it couldn't go on without me, that the clients wanted me to be involved. I wasn't building spec homes, right? That's probably a better business model because you can just stamp out the home. I was doing, in a way, art. You're coming in and your canvas is the kitchen or the bathroom or the custom home, but you're building other people's dreams and it's different every time. And it's really hard to duplicate and scale that. And I just didn't want to do it. And so I was able to write down a lot of those things that I didn't want. And now I've got a good idea on how to craft my next business, my next venture, what I'm going to focus my energy and attention on so that I don't end up with getting those things again. Imagine yourself as an architect of your life. You are going to design your life with intent. If you wanted to build a birdhouse and you had some basic construction knowledge, you really don't need an architect, right? You just buy some wood, go to Home Depot, make some cuts, nail it together, and hopefully it turns out just fine. I mean, after all, it's just a birdhouse. You might be able to even do this with a doghouse if you've got basic skills. Get some plywood, some two by fours, and without really having to plan too much out, within an afternoon, you've got yourself a doghouse. But if you want to build a beautiful custom home with the infinity pool and the elevator and the turrets and the curved walls and the spa shower and the body sprays and the heated warm tile floors and the 20 foot soaring ceilings and the chandeliers imported from Italy, like you need a plan. Let's take it even a step further. Let's say you want to do something truly magnificent. Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. Retractable roof, state-of-the-art. You know, they've got phone chargers built into the seats. I mean, there's been nothing like this as far as a engineering marvel as the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. You look at this thing, and it's beautiful. You think that those guys just started digging and see what happens? You think they approached that project with the same level of care as you approach building a doghouse or a birdhouse? No. They probably spent millions and millions of dollars on those plans and maybe even years planning those things out. Teams of architects crafting out to every detail how they were going to put together this stadium or how they're going to put together this fine custom home, the threshold heights, the doors, the brands of all the hardware, the appliances, how everything fits and meshes together to give that client the experience that they want. So why would you approach your life in a haphazard way? Why would you approach your life with no plan, without being an architect, without being a designer, without taking the time to write out my plan? And then to adapt, adjust, you know, as you're going along. So that's where I'm saying the start of your plan is take out a piece of notebook paper. And I would recommend you do this today, right after you finish listening to this. Write out the things that you don't want. Write out the things in your life that you don't want to accept anymore. Ladder those over to maybe the things that you do want. Maybe once you've identified those things you don't want, it becomes easier to identify the things that you do want because you don't want to get to the end of your life and look at your situation, maybe not the end of your life, but 10, 20 years down the road and say, wow, I traded my life force. I traded my time. I traded everything because time is not money. Time is infinitely more valuable than money. And I've traded that for something that I didn't want. I either built a business that trapped me I built a business that is not valuable to me, that doesn't provide me the lifestyle that I want to live, or I've spent 10 years of my life building another's dream, working in another field that I'm not passionate about. And there's nothing wrong with going alongside others and working together in a symbiotic relationship and building a vision together as an employee. There's nothing wrong with that, as long as it's what you want to do, as long as it's what you're passionate about, right? Because that time, we can't get back. So get really clear on what you don't want. Get really clear on what you do want. So let's say 
you are clear on what you want. You're very, very clear, but I'm still scared. I don't have the motivation to take the actions I need to take. Or for whatever reason, I get up to the precipice and I don't do it. How do I overcome that hurdle? That's what we're going to talk about in the next episode. How you can solve any problem, get any result that you want, overcome fear, take the actions and get the results by tracing it back to the root cause. It's an incredibly powerful episode. I recommend you tune in. I dig further into my story and I walk you through this tool that you can use to solve any problem you want. Guys, thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next one. This is the podcastfactory.com.